Good morning, Year 11. Um, it's Mrs Hobbs here, and I am going to be taking through you through using mnemonics to revise. Um, it's one of the strands of revision techniques that you are going to be looking at um, during this term, and you might recognise the one that's on this slide, which is a mnemonic that allows you to remember the order of the planets in the solar system. We'll come back to that shortly. So what actually is a mnemonic, other than a difficult word to spell and pronounce? Um, it's basically a general term that refers to any technique that engages with your memory or helps your memory. More specifically, it's a way of turning key information that you need to remember for your exams into an easier way of remembering it. Okay, so one of the first types of mnemonics that we're going to look at is an acronym mnemonic. And this is where we create, uh, we abbreviate information. So we take a piece of information that we need to remember and we create a word where each letter in the word will represent something that we need to remember. Uh, the best way of explaining this is with an example, and many of you will have been taught this example by your science or chemistry teachers. Um, it's from a, it's about a chemistry reaction called oxidation and re reduction reactions. And the mnemonic acronym that helps you remember the key information is oil rig. So oil rig, spelled O-I-L-R-I-G, stands for oxidation is loss of electrons, well, oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. And what that will allow you to do is if you were asked a question about an oxidation reaction or a reduction reaction in your science exam, you can remember that acronym, oil rig. You could write down that key information, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. And then that will allow you to structure your answer with the key information about that topic. So acronyms are really, really easy to remember. Oil rig. It's a single word where each letter represents a key word in the information that you need to remember. Now, what's really important is there only very good for small amounts of information. And so once your acronym gets longer than five or six letters, it may be really hard to recall uh, what each of the letters stand for. So I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of some acronym, some acronym mnemonics. So this is one that you might be familiar with. Um, depending on which classrooms you go into for your science lessons and your teacher. But it's a really useful mnemonic acronym called Quirkus. It allows you to think about answering those mathematical questions um, in your science exams. The Q stands for quantities. So remember to identify all the quantities you have. U, remembering to put the correct units. E, your equation, specifically relating to your equation sheet, make sure you've got that ready. R, you might need to rearrange your equation. C, use your calculator to complete your calculations. U, make sure your units are correct. And S is for success. So Quirkus, your maths questions to make sure that we get all of those relevant steps in. And taking you through on the next slide, Mr. Banks is going to talk you through a mnemonic acronym. So this is really important for paper one chemistry, panic to when you're using electrolysis, positive anode, negative is cathode. Once you've got that, you're able to be able to answer any question about electrolysis.
Okay, phrases and acrostics are better for memorising longer lists of information, especially when the order is important. So, especially in science, you will have been taught things where the order of the words that you need to remember is really important. So, for example, the electromagnetic spectrum. Your teachers will have been drumming it into you that radio waves have the longest wavelength, then microwaves, then infrared, visible light, etc. There's lots of famous phrases and acrostics, and basically they work by taking the first letter of each word in the list that you need to remember, and then you use that to make a word. So again, in exam conditions, it's about remembering that word and then translating the key information um, from that. So just an example on the next slide. As I've said, the electromagnetic spectrum, you must remember the order radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and then gamma rays. And here's three options that um, different students have been known to use to help remember that order. Just going to read the first one for you. Read my instructions visible under x-ray glasses. That would help some students remember the key letter R, M, I, V, U, X, G. And then that would allow them, <clears throat> if they needed to, to recall the order, the correct order of the electromagnetic spectrum. Mr. Booth's going to show you one here that uses that same principle. Okay, there's some key things to remember then, year 11, when using mnemonics. First of all, on their own, they are meaningless. This is really, really important. If you write oil rig down in your exam, you will not score any marks because it means nothing. You have to use the mnemonic to help you remember the actual answer itself. So please, please remember that again. Do not write down oil rig or do not write down my very easy method speeds up naming planets because that means nothing. You have to use that. Write it down by all means in the margin or on some scrap paper and then use that to form your answer. And our final, top, blah, final top tip is don't overdo it. You cannot remember everything in your GCSEs using mnemonics, so don't bother trying. Pick out some key information. Think in your revision plan. Tonight I'm going to do some mnemonics and select the things that lend themselves to this or the ones that you know already. And hopefully, guys, you'll find this a really useful revision strategy. Okay, good luck.